Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In the previous video, we talked about nomenclature in alkenes. In this video, I'm going to start talking about isomerism in alkenes. Alkenes show two types of isomerism, structural isomerism and geometrical isomerism. But before I come to this, let us first just revise, you know, what isomerism is. Compounds that have the same molecular formula, but they have different structural formula are said to be isomers. Now, when we say they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula, how can uh, the same atoms form different kinds of molecules or different structures? Logically, they can do so if the bonding is different, if there is some change in the bonding. So we find that there is, if there is a change in the bonding that results in the difference in the structural formula, those isomers are known as structural isomers. And if the bonding is also the same, but the orientation of the atoms is different, which is causing them to behave differently, such isomers are known as geometrical isomers or stereoisomers. We have studied isomers in detail in the previous chapter and also when I explained the isomers in milkanes, I kind of revised all of it with you. Anyway, I would uh, suggest that you go back to those videos and watch them before you come to this because once you have a good foundation and an understanding of what isomerisms are, this becomes easy peasy for you to understand. And secondly, I'm also encouraging you to watch those because I'm not actually going to explain entire isomerism to you. We are straight going to discuss the isomers that are seen in alkenes. Now, whenever the structure of the molecule has to be different, we have, now we are talking of structural isomers. When the structure has to be different by bonding, because in geometrical isomers, the structure is different not even the bonding is the same, the structure is yet different because of the orientation and space of the atoms or the groups in the uh, molecule. So we are not talking about the geometrical isomers here. In structural isomers, these will be formed if the carbon chain or the functional group or the position of the double bond is uh, at a different place. So if bonding is different in any way, whether the multiple bond is at some other place, uh, in the carbon chain or the carbon chain itself is a straight chain or is it branched does it have a single branch does it have a double branch so all these uh, you know arrangements of the same atoms in different forms will give rise to the different isomers but this is something that you already know so if we look at that if you see the first member uh, first table member of alkenes is ethene ethene has a formula c2h4 two carbons with a double bond between them and two, two carbons and hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen. If you look at this, you can guess if just by looking at the structure, there is no possibility of isomers in ethene. Because how can you change the bonding here? The two carbons have to be bound to each other. The tetravalency of every carbon has to be completed. And that can only be completed with the help of hydrogen. So this can have no other structure. The same is the case of propene. In the case of propene, that is C3H6. What is seen? The, there are two car three carbons, two of which have a double bond and one has a single bond and the rest of the uh, valencies are filled up by hydrogen. So this will have a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here. This has three uh, bonds already, so it has only one hydrogen. This has two bonds, so it has two hydrogens. One hydrogen here and one hydrogen here, right? Now looking at this also, you can see that there is no possibility of isomerism. Let us assume that the double bond shifts here. If it shifts here, I'll start counting from this direction. It'll be the same molecule, only instead of looking at it from this side, I'm looking at it from this side. Only the direction has changed. So isomers are not possible even in the case of uh, propene. So the first member that shows isomerism is butene. So let us see the isomers of butene. So these are the different isomers of butene. The first one, you assume, is a straight chain. Okay, in the straight chain, the double bond is on the first carbon. So how do we name this 
uh, isomer of butene it is normal butene and but and the ene is on the first carbon so we'll call it but one ene that's the name given to it now what other arrangement is possible the other arrangement is possible that this double bond instead of being between the first two atoms carbon atoms it can be between the second and the third right if that happens you get but two ene the name is also different and always you have to focus look from the other side does it give you the same structure no if I had the double bond between the third and the fourth would it have been a separate isomer no why because then I would have counted from this direction and the name of the compound would still have been but one in if the double bond was here I would still call it but one in so the other option of the double bond being at another place is only between carbon 2 and carbon 3 so you get but 2 in so the, this type of structural isomer where the position of a certain uh, multiple bond or a group is different is known as position isomerism these are isomers why because the position of the double bond is different in both of them so this is an example of position isomerism but in this third case take a look what we are doing we are now changing the uh, the bonding itself between the carbon chain not the double bond we are not shifting the double bond we are shifting the shape we are changing the shape of the chain so instead of having a straight chain we make a branched chain and once we make now you have three carbons in the main chain and one branch here so we still have four carbons the formula still is c4h8 but this now how would you name it this now the parent hydrocarbon becomes propene and on the second carbon you have a methyl group to it uh, attached to it so it is two methyl prop one in because the ene is on the first carbon and the methyl group is attached to the second carbon because we are counting from this direction so it becomes two methyl prop one ene here i told you that these two are structural isomers of course but there is a difference between them because they are position isomers but here it is not the position of the double bond that is different and in any of these there was no methyl group attached it was a straight chain so this is not a position isomer what is this this is a chain isomer what is its relationship with any of these if you look at this and this there is no difference in the uh, in this and this there is no difference in the position of the double bond the difference is only in the uh, in the methyl group in the chain the chain has changed its shape so these two are chain isomers and these two are also chain isomers right so one and two are position isomers one and three and two and three this is one two and three one and two are position isomers one and three and two and three are examples of chain isomers where the chain itself is different cloudy no parking cloudy oh he won't stop okay so now let us come to question 13.9 this is a solved example of your textbook and I'll explain this which will make isomers in the case of at least the structural isomers in the case of alkenes pretty clear to you the question is you have to write the structures in the IUPAC names of different structural isomers of alkenes corresponding to C5H10 so here we had butene we are now going to make the isomers of pentene so let's start the first one should always be we should first go for the position isomers we'll take the double bond and we'll change the position of double bond as much as we can so let us write the first uh, member where the double bond is on the first carbon so carbon there are five carbons so carbon and there's a double bond one two three four five there are five carbons now fill up with hydrogens this will be three hydrogens there are two bonds so two hydrogens two bonds two hydrogens this is this has three bonds one hydrogen two bonds two hydrogens okay so this is the first member and how would you name this the naming would be this would be pent one a so this is pent one 
Let's make the second isomer. Let's change the position of the double bond. So we'll write C again. Uh, this is CH3, CH double bond, CH, CH2 and CH3. Right? Do you see what have I done again? I have shifted the double bond between the second and the third carbon. And I have filled up the spaces with hydrogens alongside. Here, there's only one bond, so three hydrogens, three bonds, one hydrogen, three bonds, one hydrogen, two bonds, two hydrogens, one bond, three hydrogens. So tetravalency of every carbon has been completed. Let us name this now. This would be pent to in, right? So this is the second hydrocarbon, uh, second isomer. Now, if I shift this double bond here, right? Let us say I shift it here. If I shift it here, will I get an isomer? Let's try to see. If I shift it here, if I come from this direction, I may call it pent 3 in, but which will be wrong because I will start counting from this direction. And if I come from this direction, this becomes the second carbon. So I'll again get pent 2 in, which means that that is not an isomer. So that option is gone. So I have already made the position uh, of the double bond, I've got only two isomers. So what is the next thing that I can do? I can go in for branches. So let us go in for a branched, um, for branched isomers of uh, what, pentene. So let us take one, one of these groups, one methyl group. So if I take one methyl group, my chain becomes of four carbons. So I have, and let me put a double bond here. C, double bond, then a single bond, a single bond, and let me have a branch here, okay? This becomes CH3, this has three, so it is one, this has three bonds, so it has one, and this has two, so it has two. Now, how would I name this? This would be, I will come from this direction because the ene should get the lower locant. So this is um, butene, butone ene, but the methyl is on the third carbon. So I write three, methyl butte one in okay three methyl butte one in now i can shift this double bond between these two carbons also so let's do that this will become ch3 this will become c uh, double bond okay and this is C, a CH3. I'm not filling up the hydrogens yet. Uh, and the CH3. Okay. Here we have already have four uh, bonds. So no hydrogen. Three bonds, one hydrogen. Right. And one hydrogen, if you really look, is uh, one, two, three. Yeah. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. So we are right. Our formula is correct. How would you name this now? If you really look, this is a methyl group and I'll now count from this direction. So this will be 2-methyl-butene. So it is 2-methyl-butene, right? It will be 2-methyl-butene. Now, is there a possibility of another isomer? 2-methyl-butene, if I, let us say, shift it, yeah. If I shift it, the double bond between, now, position in this also. If I shift the, let us say, I write CH, mm, put the double bond here, and the methyl here, and C, CH3. This will become CH2, this is 4, and this is CH2. Okay. Now look, this is also different. The double bond is also on the first carbon and the methyl is on the second carbon. So this would be 2-methyl-but-1-ene. This was 2-methyl-but-2-ene, while this is 2-methyl-but-1-ene. Now that we have made these structures, is it possible for us to make another isomer? You remember in the case of pentane, what we did, we made a neopentane structure where one carbon was in the center and four carbons came on the four sides. CH3, 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 you remember? 
So that was uh, neopentane or 2,2-dimethylpropane. Can we do that in this case? Let us see. In order to do that, what will we have to do? We will have to bring this methyl group and attach it here to this carbon. So is it possible to have a double bond between two carbons and still have that carbon making three other bonds? This carbon, if it has to have a methyl group on it, it, it can it have it? No. Why? Because if it has a methyl group here, it will have five bonds. Let me just show it to you. CH2, let me assume that the double bond remains here. You have carbon here. You have CH. This will become CH3. This is a CH3. Can I have a CH3 here? No, because this carbon is already forming four bonds. Therefore, a neopentane kind of structure or isomer is not possible in the case of uh, pentene. Right? So these were the isomers, the structural isomers of pentane. I just noticed an error. I have written CH3 here. So CH3 and a double bond cannot exist. This should be CH2. Right? And now look at the number of carbon hydrogen atoms. 3 plus 3 is 6, 7, 8. Now it gives you the right number of hydrogens also. So there was this little error here which I had to uh, correct. Right? So it is uh, 2 methyl prop 1 E. With this, I'll wind up this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about geometrical isomerism. So uh, if you want to watch the other videos of this chapter, please click the link that will appear uh, in some corner of your uh, board. And with this, I wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.